radical Islam. And that is what we're still going to talk about. See all these nice people over here that have gathered to hear these words. You think there is no threat of radical Islam in America. You say we're not over here stoning the adulterer. We're not beheading anybody. Well, we're not doing the things that everybody reads about or watches on YouTube. But let me point out again another fact. It was only weeks ago that a protest started with thousands of moderate Muslims. Thousands of moderate Muslims took to the streets to peacefully assemble, to gather together, to raise their voice, to be seen, to be heard. They were peacefully protesting in front of a UN building in Afghanistan. And 14 or 15 radical Islamic people, Muslims, hijacked their protest. It has been broadcast and I think almost every news outlet there were thousands of moderate Muslims and only 14 or 15 radicals. But you know, all the images that came out of that, that the murderous day, that day of bloodshed, the day of, of killing, of beheadings, I didn't see 14 or 15 people in those photographs. It only took a matter of moments and thousands of modern Muslims became radicalized just like that. Is that a threat here in America? Everybody turn around. That is a real threat. I'm not saying it will happen. I'm saying it is possible. It only takes a moment, not one time. Did the moderate stand up and say no? Not one time. Did those thousands try to overcome the 14 and say no? Today you stand there and you say, I will not take a stand against radical Islam. If we can't trust you now, how can we trust you all do the same? There is definitely a real threat against radical Islam here in America. It will not be flown over. It will not be imported. It is being grown and cultivated right here in our very homeland. And we have to see this as the threat that it is. As I said, this is not an opinion. This is history talking. You go back and you do your own homework. You go back and you read the articles. You go back and you look at the photographs and you'll see how quickly it can happen. Am I saying that every Muslim is dangerous? No, I'm not saying that. We're not saying that every Muslim is dangerous, every Muslim is a radical, we're not saying that. What we're saying is if you can't take a stand against radical Islam today, do not fool yourself. The Bible says do not deceive yourself that you'll change. And actually the Bible is what brought us here today. Well, we're not here without the Bible, I can tell you right now, without the Word of God, I would not have enough love in my heart for anybody over there. But the Word of God is what's got me here. The Word and the love of God is what has brought a conviction into my life to take a stand for the truth. Why are we talking about radical Islam? Why, why is the world talking about radical Islam? I can tell you why. Because the church and the cowardly pastors have not done their job. The church has cowered down. It has bowed down to a world spirit. It has, it has broken the commandment given to him by God. The Bible says what fellowship.
can the light have with darkness? In other words, where can a, a pastor, a Christian, a man of God, where can he join in solidarity with a false religion? Where can a man of God that would even call himself a Christian join hands with an interfaith community with the understanding that there are many ways to God? That is a perversion. That is a lie from hell. John 14, 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way the truth and the life. No one, I mean no one, comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said, I am the way, not Mohammed, not obeying some Islamic law, not doing what you think is right, I don't care how many old ladies you've helped across the street or how many times you've got down on your knees and prayed. There is no other way to salvation except through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So why are we still talking about Islam? I heard the Imam from the largest mosque in America Say, you know, when you burn that Quran, Jesus was mentioned 123 times. I say Jesus was insulted 123 times where you refer to him as nothing but a prophet. You have, you have defiled the Son of God, the deity of Christ, the atoning blood, your only hope for salvation by referring to him as merely a prophet. Verse 7 says, if you really know me, see in Islam you think you know Jesus, peace be unto his name. You think you know him. He says here, if you really know me, if you really knew I was the son of God, you would drop that burqa. You would put down that false teaching. You would let go of your hate and your anger. And you would repent right now. You would cry out for mercy. You would receive grace. And you would really know what peace is all about. He said, if you really knew me, if you really know me, you will know my Father. See, the Jesus of Islam, he doesn't talk about his father because that's not my Jesus. My Jesus died on a cross that I could have an eternity. He gave me hope. He gave me freedom. He, he gave me a conviction. And he put me here in America where I can speak out that conviction, where I fear a persecution. And we will continue to do that. I say it's time the church come out of hiding. I say every Christian should grab hold of his pastor. It's time to clean house in the church. We're going to get the house of God in order. And then we can take care of the rest of the world. But it's time to throw out the money changers. The pastors that are just telling the people what they want to hear, patting them on the back, giving them a lollipop, telling them that everything is going to be okay. God loves you. God does love you. He gave you so much love. He sent his one and only son. We really have to see that. That is our hope. That is what has brought us here. That is the conviction that drives us. See, the Bible, the Word of God, it is the most important piece of literature ever written. But here in America, we've been given something powerful as well. God, God has, has set forth 
a United States Constitution written by men that we can preserve the right of free speech, that we can preach that word of God. So we are going to stand by that. We are going to fight for that. No level of intimidation from the devil will drive us back or cause us to stop. It's all of you. Like I said, I thank everyone here. But it's the people that don't know it is what fuels the fire. I thank everyone for them coming out today. I thank you for exercising your right to freedom of speech. Because I got news for you. Once that constitution is gone, because of Sharia law, you won't stand there any longer. You will do what you're told to do. And that fear of government, that, that victory for tyranny will be upon us. Thank you. Let's look at the flag. 